Thank you for that introduction, and thanks everyone for coming to my talk. And uh, I did this work with Leda Nake and uh, Christian D. Michael, all from the University of Waterloo. So this is going to be the structure of my presentation today. People need a supportive and encouraging environment to grow and change within. Competition drives apart. So in this talk, I'm going to show you that one size does not fit all when it comes to designing games and gamified systems to motivate behavior change, but instead that tailoring persuasive games to match the target user personality will actually increase the efficacy of motivating behavior change. And to achieve that, I hope to answer the research question, is there value in tailoring persuasive technology to match the target user personality? As we know, playing digital game is one of the most common leisure time activity in our today's society. For example, according to recent research, 99% of adolescent boys and 94% of adolescent girls, including people from all ethnic groups, play digital games regularly. And as a result, recently we are witnessing an increase in the design and application of games for purposes other than entertainment. Persuasive game and gamified systems are designed for the primary purpose of motivating people to adopt behaviors and attitudes that are beneficial for them and their communities using various persuasive strategies. And studies have shown that persuasive game can actually be an effective way for motivating behavior change. As a result, several persuasive games have been designed targeted at promoting behavior change in various domains. For example, N Squared World Adventure is a role-playing game for impacting knowledge about the consequences of a alcohol consumption and hence discourage risky drinking behavior. The main problem with persuasive health game is that they adopt the one-size-fits-all approach in their design and research has shown that a method that motivates one type of person may actually discourage behavior for a different type of person. For example, a game that uses a leaderboard to show high score may encourage a competitive player but may discourage others who do not strive in competitive environments. So tailoring persuasive games to a specific type of users may be good, but first we need to consider what do we tailor and who do we actually tailor it for. First, let me answer what we tailor. There are many ways that persuasive games and gamify system can be tailored. However, in this study, we investigate how we can tailor persuasive games and gamify systems by tailoring the strategies, that persuasive strategies employed in their design. And according to persuasive system design framework, these are the 10 commonly employed strategies in persuasive uh, games design. The competition strategy, which allow people to compete to perform the behavior. The cooperation allows people to work together, that is collaborate to motivate them to perform the behavior. Reward offers virtual rewards such as points, badges to use that to motivate them. Simulation, actually punishment is the opposite of reward. Simulation shows the cause and effect linkage of an individual's behavior and shows the projected outcome of the behavior. Personalization provides system controlled tailored content. And that is different from customization which provides user controlled tailored content. Secondly, we also need to consider who we tell for. Research on individual differences shows that people differ in many ways. Therefore, it is inappropriate to treat people as monolithic group. And several attempts have been made towards classifying individuals into various personality types. And one popular and widely accepted classification is the big five personality type of extraversion. Extroverted people are outgoing, expressive, and ambitious. Conscientious people are self-disciplined, goal-oriented, and organized. Openness are curious and they're creative. Agreeable people are considerate, cooperative, friendly, and helpful. And finally, neurotic people are nervous, fearful, distrustful, and emotionally unstable. 
So in this study, we want to examine ways that persuasive game and gamified persuasive systems can be tailored to personality types by answering the research question, is there value in tailoring persuasive uh, games and gamified systems to various personality types? And to at answer the research question, we develop a storyboard uh, prototype illustrating the individual strategies in the context of persuasive game and gamified persuasive systems for motivating change in risky alcohol drinking behavior. And here is an example of one of the storyboards illustrating the reward strategy. The storyboards were drawn by artists and were iteratively evaluated and refined. We conducted a large scale study of 660 participants recruited online to ascertain the persuasiveness of the strategies and we use validated scale to measure our participants' uh, personality types indirectly and the persuasiveness of the strategies individually. So using the data we collected from the study, we simultaneously modeled the relationship between the big five personality types and the 10 persuasive strategies using partial least square structural equation modeling. The model revealed important strategies and their uh, that persuasive game and gamified system designers should focus when designing games targeting each personality types. The detail of the modeling process can be found in our paper. However, I'm happy to answer any question should anyone be interested in the detail. So if the strategies motivate the personality types differently, then we will see differences in the persuasiveness of the strategies for each of the personality types. And this is the result from the modeling. Let me explain what the results mean. The columns represent the persuasive strategies that we have seen, and the rows show the model results for each of the personality types separately. The numbers in the cell <coughs> represent standardized beta coefficient. This is very important. The numbers represent standardized beta coefficient. And if there's a statistically significant effect, that is P less than or equal to 0.05, then you will see a number in the cell. And a higher number indicates higher weighing. For example, the value of 0.14 here shows that allowing people who are high in agreeableness to compete will actually motivate them to perform the desired behavior. An empty cell, on the other hand, indicates that competition will not motivate conscientious people to perform the behavior. And finally, a negative value indicates that competition would demotivate openness. So what do the results show? The big news is that there are statistically significant differences between the personality types with respect to the persuasiveness of the strategies. In general, the personality types are motivated by different strategies. <coughs> For example, in general, competition would motivate behavior for agreeable and extroverted people. And some of the reasons for the preference for competition by agreeable and extroverted people, according to the qualitative comments, are that competition challenges them, makes them committed to the behavior, and gives a feeling of accomplishment. For example, according to the participant number 80, and I quote, winning gives a great feeling of accomplishment. On the other hand, competition would demotivate behavior for openness and would do nothing for conscientious and neurotic people. Some of the reasons for the low preference for competition by open, conscientious, and neurotic people includes the tendency of competition to cause unnecessary stress, reduce self-confidence and self-esteem, encourage body shaming, and jeopardize individuals' privacy and friendship. For example, according to participant 356, and I quote, people need a supportive and encouraging environment to grow and change within. Competition drives people apart. In general, extroversion and agreeableness are matched as the personality type that are most responsive to the persuasive strategies overall. 
Exacerbation is positively associated with all the strategies, while agreeableness is positively associated with all except goal setting. On the other hand, openness and neurotism emerged as the least responsive personality trait, with openness being negatively associated with most of the strategies, while neurotism shows no significant relation with any of the strategies. Our findings has a number of uh, implications for designing games and gamified systems to appeal to a broader audience and for tailoring to users with a specific personality type. We discuss most of these implications in our paper, and I'm going to give just a few examples here. Feel free to check it out. For example, our findings show that, in general, personalization, simulation, and goal setting are the most persuasive of the strategies. They are perceived as positive or non-significant by most of the personalities and do not influence any negatively. This is very important. They do not influence any negatively. Therefore, we recommend that to appeal to a broader user population, persuasive game and gabify system designers should employ personalization, simulation, and goal setting and we list some game mechanisms that can be used to operationalize these strategies in game design in our paper. Please do check them out. Again, there are many ways that our results can be applied for tailoring persuasive games to specific personality types. For example, our findings show that personalization is the only strategy that is positively associated with people who are open to experience. Remember that personalization offers system-controlled tailored content, and that is different from user-controlled tailored content, which is customization. Therefore, we recommend that when designing to specifically appeal to people who are open to experience, designers should personalize the system using system-controlled tailoring. Our results indicates that extraversion, agreeableness, and openness are the three personality traits that predict most of the variance in the effectiveness of persuasive strategies. <coughs> Therefore, we recommend that to achieve personality-driven tailoring, it is necessary to differentiate participants based on extraversion, agreeable, and openness traits at least. Finally, our findings reveal that socially oriented strategies, competition, social comparison, and cooperation are likely to demotivate behavior for people who are introverted, open to experience, and less agreeable. Our qualitative results show that this group of people perceive these strategies as invasive, less privacy preserving, and have higher likelihood of harming friendship. Therefore, we recommend that designers should preserve users' privacy when employing socially oriented strategies. Designers could include mechanisms that allow users to hide their identity or use nicknames. And as an alternative to hiding their identity, it is also possible to abstract behavior by showing only the percentage of the behavior as a percentage of an individual's goal, as, a show, as opposed to showing the actual data. We are assuming that this is going to be a good abstraction and less invasive alternative to showing the actual behavior performance data. The result answers the overarching research question by showing that tailoring the strategies employed in persuasive games and gamified system design to the personality type could increase their efficacy at motivating desired behavior change. As part of our future work, we are interested in validating our results in other persuasive and gamified system application domains. We are also interested in developing and evaluating persuasive games and gamified systems for promoting healthy behavior tailored using our guideline. So, anyone designing persuasive games and gamified persuasive systems should remember that one size does not fit all when it comes to designing persuasive games and gamified systems to motivate behavior change. But actually, that tailoring persuasive games to match the target user type would increase its efficacy at motivating the desired behavior change. And uh, I want to thank the Canadian government for funding uh, 
my work through the ENSOC and the Banton Fellowship and to the University of Waterloo. And thank you all for listening and uh, coming around. I welcome your comments and questions. I've just got a question. The game you used for that, was it all the alcohol game? Oh, sorry, which game could you were you... Question again? Sorry, which game were you testing on? Okay, oh, that's an, a nice question. Thank you. Actually, we tested the strategies in the context of alcohol, risky alcohol drinking behavior. I was just, um, just thinking because um, for Big Five, it's really strongly correlated to differences in alcohol behavior. And... So openness, if you have high openness, that's really highly correlated to, I think it's high openness is more highly correlated to more risky alcohol behavior. Oh. Things like that. So I think, I was wondering how, how the choice of game might affect these results. That's, a, that's an interesting question and uh, something I would actually look into. But however, I would want to comment that, yeah, we kind of try to, contextualize our game in the context of binge drinking, but the overall concept, I believe, could be applied in other behavioral domains since they are kind of in a high level trying to mimic the strategies. So it's, yeah. uh, that, that does not dispute what you've said, but it's something I would actually look into. In. So you'd kind of anticipate those numbers. I see whether it has any effect, and that's what yeah. the direction our future work is going to be going to, right? We're thinking of evaluating, the, doing the same thing for other behaviors and see whether there's still those findings are going to stand or is going to be domain dependent. Thank you. Hi, uh, Margaret Burnett, Oregon State. Thank you. This, this work was very interesting, and I'm going to be thinking about it for a while. Um, one question I had was I noticed that you had about half females and about half males. Did you analyze your results for gender differences? Thanks. That's interesting, too. That's what I am exactly doing right now, to look at the gender differences aspect of it. And I'm already seeing that there's a tons of it. So it's a very nice one. I, would, uh, I hope to share the results in future. Good. Yeah, thanks. Hi. <coughs> uh, Herman Saxona, uh, Northeastern University of Boston. Um, you talk about uh, telling users, telling the game the, to users with uh, specific um, personalities. Can you talk a, a bit more about um, using game tailoring where you have two or more uh, users where they have to collaborate together and, um, and in cases where they have like contrasting personality type, like um, how, how would you design around that? Thanks. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I haven't thought about that before now, but I think if we go by the context of what we have just uh, said with respect to our guideline, I would think that it's safer to pair people who have the same kind of personality in a collaborative kind of game, because that basically means that, okay, I'm making the game appropriate for them, right? That means that they would be playing a game that each of them care so much about, and that will facilitate a better collaboration. So I would think that having them, having pairing people who have the same personality would make more sense, since that would mean that the game is tailored to match their personality, and they would enjoy it both together. Thank you. Thanks. I have a question about uh, specifically, um, you used uh, the big five yes. for personality. I was wondering if you thought about using other individual differences measures than just the big five. Yeah, I haven't used any one for none. I've used gamma type in the, in the past, which actually shows that there is uh, some differences as in it's possible to actually work in that dimension. But for this particular study, no, I just used the big five personality for an obvious reason. It's a widely accepted uh, construct, and apart from that, it can be applied to people who are not necessarily gamers. So that really was the major appeal to, for us to use it. And I, I'm not, that's not to say that there, there's possibility that other personality types could actually play a role in doing this as well. But for this particular one, we think that the big five was more appropriate for us. Thank you. 